Well, welcome back. In today's haircut, we're going to be doing a, an undercut with a little bit of a baby mullet. So a little hair hanging over the nape that kind of sticks out. And the inspiration for this cut was um, one of the supermodels from the 80s, Amber Valletta, had this gamine pixie that I absolutely love. So we're going to do a take on that today. First section is center the recession straight back to the quarter part quarter part down into the parietal ridge and then we're going to square it off in the back. That's going to be our section for the top from the bottom. And then we're going to take and start on the side. I'll take a parallel section to the front hairline. I'll pull that forward to the front of the section and then cut my short length. And I'm just going the length of my fingers because I want to get everything underneath here really short and clean but I don't want to necessarily buzz everything off. I want to leave a little bit of hair to make it easier to blend into my little baby mullet that I'm going to keep in the back. So I'm just going to keep taking parallel sections until I get to the section behind the ear. Behind the ear, I'm not going to go down any further than the mastoid. So that bone right behind the ear is going to be the guide to, to show me how far down that I'm going to cut this short hair. And then everything below that, I'm just going to leave and we'll blend that later. I'm just going to continue working my guide all the way back into the, the, the center of the back. You know, maintaining that length down in the nape and just following the head shape. The closer that I take my sections, the cleaner that my cut's going to be and the less cleanup that I'll have to go through and do. But no matter what, I'll still have to cross check everything and make sure everything is nice and smooth. Especially on blonde hair, it seems to show every fault and flaw that you have. So be patient and be diligent and just cross check and make sure everything is nice and smooth. I shouldn't have any big you know, points or any big gaps sticking out there, I should just go through and just cross check any little nibbles that stick off. If I have big chunks hanging out, that means I wasn't very consistent with my sectioning and I wasn't consistent with my section size, or uh, I was elevating it improperly for each section. So I'm using my uh, Osaka scissors. It has a, a nice point on it so I can go through and really fine tune, but the blade's pretty nice and sharp so I can really cut a good section of hair as well. And I'll just clean up around the front hairline and then clean up over the ear a little bit as well. Now I'll continue to clean up behind the ear and make sure everything from the mastoid up is nice and clean and tight. And then we'll do a little scissor over comb just to make that fit in a little bit tighter towards the hairline. And I'll just be patient. And the more times that I move my scissor blade, the more cuts that I'm going to have. The more cuts that I'll have, the smoother that my scissor over comb is going to be. And scissor over comb is as much about the comb as it is about anything else. With the scissor, it's pretty straightforward. You just keep one blade straight and the other blade moving. And then easily, smoothly glide up the head as you're taking a lot of little scissor strokes. And be very patient with it. But the comb is just as important so I can make sure I have a clean section to cut on. And I don't move it too fast or too slow. Now here in the back, I'll just take a, a horizontal section right at the mastoid. And cross check that up to make sure everything in the back cleans up as well. Yes, right here you can really see where I'm separating the short hair from the long hair. Right there at the mastoid. And we'll continue the same thing on the other side. You know, work my sections all the way to the middle. Then once I run out of hair, then I'll go back in and cross check that as well, just like I did on the other side. Being mindful of where I'm not layering down past. So I'm not going past the, the mastoid. And I want to keep all that hair in the back and be patient and diligent and allow myself the time to work on my blend in phases as opposed to trying to get everything done in one pass. When you're dealing with something like this, it's going to take a lot of time to fit everything in. So here I'm going to comb all the hair in the nape, my little, my little baby mullet in the back, and comb all that up to the middle of the ear and just cut that so that I layer the whole back. So it's a little shorter at the top and gradually gets a little longer towards the bottom of the hairline. 
Now here I'm going to grab my Tokyo thinning scissors and I'm going to go through and release some of the weight in my short hair. I'm going to take a little bit off of the mullet just to soften it up and then soften up my, uh, my short hair underneath just to make sure everything is a nice smooth blend. So just repeating the same kind of scissor over comb method and hitting just the very ends of the hair. I'm not trying to take the length off, I'm just trying to soften the edges so it blends smoother. Now here on my little baby mullet, I'm going to go through and put some texture in it so I'll hold it out vertically and then just point cut into it with my Tokyo thinning scissors so that I can remove some of the weight from there so I can get that those flippy little pieces. And I want to try to not thin the same hair twice on the first pass. After I go across it once, if I need to take more hair out from some sections versus other sections, that's no problem at all. But the first pass, I want to be, you know, very mindful to not over thin. Because once you over thin, the hair's gone, you can't do anything about it. So pay attention. <laughs> all right so after we continue to blend everything through here in the back just on the very tips that's looking pretty good we're getting some flippies there in the nape now we're going to go work on the top and i'll take a horizontal section across the back and at this point i'm going to pull out my feather styling razor and i'm just going to go through and create a new guide now this is the length that I'm going to pull everything on the top back to so I can build up some length around the front. And I'll cut this center towards the front. Everything gets cut in the center first and then work that line out towards the edges. Now as I go up the head my elevation for each section is going to get a little bit higher because I'm pulling it off of the head shape. And my scissor stroke, my razor stroke actually, is going to be getting a little broader. So I'm going to take a larger stroke with each section as I go up to the head. So when I get to the front, that section is going to be very, very strong and very, very bold. In the back, it's a little bit tighter. Comb that check. Just continue to take the same horizontal section and build up length in the front. Now here you can really see how I'm starting to elevate and take a broader razor stroke as I go up the head. Now by me elevating it with each section off the head shape, what that's going to do is that's going to give me a curved bevel line of graduation. So each step that I'm taking gets held a little higher so that rounds the shape out because it's going to mirror whatever the head shape is going to be. So as opposed to me having a straight line of graduation, it's going to bevel. And that would give me a, a more pleasing, softer, more feminine shape from a profile around the a crown of the head. Just finishing up this section and just continuing to cut from the inside out with a broad stroke. If I need to, I'll channel into each section to remove some weight. I'll let the hair show me what it needs. I don't try to force it. I'll cut it, I'll look at it, see what it needs, if I need to modify it right then, or if I can wait. Sometimes I'll wait and do it dry. Sometimes I'll see that, no, that's very prevalent. I need to take that out right then and there. There's really two schools of thought when it comes to cutting hair. You know, one is a very structured, methodical, cut everything with a straight blade kind of approach. And then the other approach is a very free form, just see and cut and whittle it down. So a razor almost demands that you have both schools of thought in your training. You have to be able to build a structured shape but also know where you need to remove weight and where something needs to be fit in and how you need to modify the shape and just whittle something away. So right here I'm using the Type R blades which have less of a guard so it exposes more of the blade. So when I go through and do a sculpture cut like this where I'm just trying to take some of the weight out of the tips, I can have more blade exposed. Now that being said, I have to be very careful with this technique because it can flat remove hair, especially if you run across a tangle or you don't have the hair wet enough 
or you know you just use too much pressure so this works really well at relieving any kind of intense buildup of weight where you're just trying to remove it from one section now right there I got a little bit too much hair so I'm gonna take some of that down in my fingers and then continue to use my sculpture technique to smooth all of that out and I'll just keep going until I'll, I'll take little bits each time and keep going until I get everything soft as I want and that's looking pretty good now here I'm working on the last section on the top I'm having her lift her head up so I can uh, approach that a little bit more easily and just take a broad stroke remove a lot of hair and make sure it's really textured but I still maintain a lot of length towards the front of the head shape is looking pretty solid now on the the short side of her head where her part is I'm gonna go through and take that section well those sections on that side I'm gonna make it a little more asymmetrical so I'm gonna really exaggerate the length on one side and less on the other so I'll just take a parallel section to what our previous parting was from the recession straight back and then just comb this down and take that a little bit shorter on this side comb everything else over make sure nothing hangs over just got a little bit right there in the front so clean that up and we're looking pretty good there so now we're just gonna go through and blow it dry I put a little texture spray on her I'm just gonna get everything off the roots in the back make sure the crown hair is is nice and smooth and blown dry evenly and get some volume in it then we're gonna grab a paddle brush to smooth everything out around the front Now here in the back, I want to work on my blend a little bit more, so I'm going to take my Tokyo Thinning Scissors and go through and just channel cut right there that section between the short and my little baby mullet. So I want to make sure I get as much of a blend through there as possible, and by channel cutting like this, I can remove a, a little bit of weight without necessarily removing the length anything that sticks out take care of that and I think we got a pretty smooth blend here now for my styling here for some reason the camera decided to focus on the background and not my lovely model Liberty but on the short camera if it's a close camera you can get a good view of it thanks for watching uh, please check out the Jatai Academy there's all kinds of great stuff on there that can make you a better hairdresser interact with us on the uh, artistry connect and leave a comment for what you'd like to see next thanks for watching I appreciate it